Tyler is. Tyler is preaching at Beach Grove Baptist Church in Trafalgar, and uh, Pat and Harold have relatives that go there, and uh, I have a friend that preaches there, Dr. Halcom. He's the pastor there, but uh, that's where Tyler is. He'll be back next Sunday. This Sunday is the last Sunday of spiritual warfare, and uh, we're talking about the warfare between us and Satan. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, to know your enemy. And our enemy is not people. When you reach a certain point in your spiritual life and you've grown, you realize that the devil is using that person to hurt you. It doesn't justify what they've done. It doesn't excuse it. Anything like that. But our real enemy is Satan, not people. That's why the Bible tells us to love our enemies. They're being used and abused by Satan to hurt you. Um, had a this is way off topic. I don't know why I'm going here, but somebody needs to hear this. I think. I had a, a doctor I went to church with in uh, Chicago. He's from Romania. Back when Romania was communist, actually Romania was called Little Russia because they were so communist, so strict. And uh, he became a Christian, him and his wife, in Romania. It finally uh, got out that he was a Christian, so they arrested him and put him in jail. Well, every day they would beat him. And as he was being beaten, he would ask them their name. And as he's being beaten, he'd be praying. And one of the guards, they would ask him, What are you doing? I'm praying for you while he's being beaten. He, he would get to know, he would ask them their children's names and why? So I can pray for your family. He would tell them that he loved them. And it drove them crazy. Finally, after a while, they had to start switching guards to beat him because he wasn't any fun beating. That's their exact words. They finally went to the superior and said, we got to do something about him. He's not falling in line. He's, he's praying for us. He's, he's talking to us about God. He tells us he loves us. we got to get rid of him. And finally they made a deal where he, if he went to the United States and, and, and go away, they'll let him go. And that's how he ended up in the United States. He said he ended up in New York with $30, him and his wife. But that story stuck with me with this thought. While they were beating him, he knew they were not the enemy. It was Satan. And he prayed for them. And he loved them. And he, he prayed for them in his cell. And that's what we're talking about. Satan wants us to hate Satan wants us to be angry at each other. Satan wants us to be bitter because of what somebody did or what somebody said. And we probably have every right to be. How much they hurt us and what they did to us, we probably have every right to be angry or bitter. And if anybody saw you and, and knew the situation, they would say, if anybody had a right to be angry or upset or bitter or hateful, that person should be... But, as a Christian, and we know that Satan's our enemy, be angry at him, be hateful towards him, but when others reach out in love, no matter what they've done to us, no matter what they've said to us. Sorry, that has nothing to do with the sermon. Maybe I can tie it in together. <laughs> but that's what we do as a Christian as we grow Today is don't stop believing. I put in there on purpose the whisper. And that's what Satan does, by the way. Satan cannot make you do anything. 
I said a few weeks ago, there was a famous comedian called Flip Wilson, and he would do something, and then somebody would ask him, and he said, well, the devil made me do it, right? And it was funny. I mean, he was a comedian. It was funny. Still remember it as a kid back in the 70s. But the bottom line, the devil can't make you do anything. But he can sure suggest. And he can sure corrupt things. And he can sure manipulate. And he does it with a whisper. With a whisper. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, I had to quote this verse every day in college. Every day we said this verse. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. And there's where we get in trouble. Uh, the Bible tells us that we walk by faith, not by sight. Not what we see, not what we feel, not what we know. Somebody told me one time, Christians, you guys abandon all logic. Sometimes. Sometimes we do. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. You abandon all logic. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And that's the battle that we have as a Christian with our enemy. Him asking us to use our own understanding. To be wise with our own knowledge. Remember when he went to Eve? And what did he appeal to her about? If you take this, you'll be as smart and wise and knowledgeable as God. And that appealed to her. And it said she saw the fruit and she realized that it was one that made one wise. So she could lean where? On her own understanding. Her own knowledge. And the Bible constantly is telling us that obedience to God is the most important thing for us to do. To obey God to believe, to trust beyond our own thoughts, our own knowledge, and what we feel, what we even know. To believe in spite of what I see and what I know. Now, I'm not saying these are always easy. It's not. Or we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't be instructed to do that constantly. We wouldn't have to be reminded constantly. But Satan likes to come and whisper in our ear, Are you sure about that? Are you sure? Now, listen, if you give your tithes right now, you're not going to be able to pay that bill. Is that what you want to do? Not pay that bill? They'll turn off your electric. They'll turn off your water. You got to eat. Come on, you got to eat. It's just whispering. And then we think, yeah, that's true. Trust me. Been there, done that. I know what it's like to start adding up what you got. And you're like, if I keep my tithes, if I keep my offering, I'll be fine this month. Kay and I were talking about that today, uh, yesterday. And uh, the, the story about the rich people who were giving lots of money and the widow gave the might. And Jesus said, I honor her because, you know, she gave all. And people see, like to use that, see God is against rich people. That's not what he's saying. Well, see, God wants you to give everything. That's what he wants. That's not what he's saying there either. Listen to the faith that she had. 
when she gave that mite. It was time for her to pay her tithe. That's what you give to the temple. It was time to give her tithe. And when she gave her tithe, what did she have left? Nothing. She knew it. She knew if she paid her tithes, she would have nothing to go home with. When she paid what she was responsible for her God, and when she did that, she did it anyway, knowing she had nothing. And God saying, now that's a faith I can work with. This isn't a sermon about money. Don't take it that way. I'm just saying that's a good example of what we're talking about. The devil whispers in your ears, you can't do that. How are you going to go home and pay your bills? How are you going to go home and eat? Uh, you need the, what if something happens? You need that money for security. When a Christian says, I must obey God. I have to believe in Him. Even if I'm giving my last dime to Him. I'm going to believe and trust in Him. I have a story about a pastor, a preacher. He was traveling somewhere and he just, it was a Sunday night, or Wednesday night, and he went into the, the church. He knew he needed to go to church. It was in between where he was going. So he went into the church, and uh, he had like $50 in his pocket, and that's all he had. That's all he had. And he's traveling, and he's got to get to point A, point B. He's in the church, and, and he sits down, and they're having this music and all those things. And, and, and for some reason, when the offering was coming, and they passed the plate. God kept telling him to give that $50. I said, God, that's all I have. I don't have anything left. I'm traveling. And it just kept pushing on him to give that $50. So he pulled it out, gave the $50. So after that, you know, they sing the last song. They get up and they said, we don't have anybody to speak today. Our pastor's not here. We don't have a preacher today. We're just going to say a prayer and then go home. Well, he said, if, if, if you like, I'm a preacher. I, I can give you a Bible lesson. I can give you a Bible story. And they said, that would be awesome. So he went up, and he gave them a, a sermon, and he preached it for them. And then, uh, you know, service was over, and they're getting ready to leave. And, you know, he's standing around and talking and stuff. And he's getting ready to leave. And one of the deacons handed him an envelope. He said, here, this is for helping us out. Now, it wasn't $50. It was $200. But he gave what? All that he had. I'm not saying if you give $50, you get the last of your money, God's going to turn around and give you $200. But I'm saying he just might. Here's the thing about belief and trusting God beyond what we can see and know. You can never outgive him. You can never outwork him. You can never outdo him. Never. God honors those who obey. He, he blesses those who have faith, not those who say, I've got to take care of me. My security is this. And those who act out of logic sometimes, it's not logical to do this. God says, I honor that the most. Because you're acting out of what you see, uh, feel. Besides what you see, what you feel, what you know, you're still stepping out. Remember Peter in the boat? Logic tells you if you step out of a boat onto water, what will happen? You guys ever heard the story about the Baptist preacher walking on water? Dad already knows the story. Baptist preacher went out fishing with a, a, a Catholic and a Pentecostal and himself, a Baptist. And they're out fishing, and he, he, these people have been fishing out there before, and he never has been with them. And all of a sudden, the Pentecostal goes, oh, I forgot the cooler. Jumps out of the boat, walks on the water, gets the cooler, walks back on the water, steps in the boat, and he goes, oh, wow, a Pentecostal? Catholic's 
fishing, and all of a sudden he goes, oh, I forgot the coffee. Jumps out of the boat, walks on the water, gets the coffee, walks on the water, comes back, steps in the boat. Baptist says, that's not fair. That, I'm, just, I'm a Baptist. If anybody's walking on water, I am. And so he came up with an excuse to jump out of the boat. He said, God, you got to help me. I'm a Baptist. I've got to walk on water. Pentecostal did, the Catholic did. I gotta walk on the water. So he jumps out of the boat and sinks. <laughs> Finally, the Pentecostal turns to the Catholic and says, You think we should have showed him where the rocks were? <laughs> there you go, that was a joke. <laughs> Logic says if you step on water, you fall. Peter acted outside of logic, what he knew for sure. What he knows, his knowledge, his own wisdom, because Jesus said, what? Come. And he got out of the boat and he walked on water, defying nature, defying logic, and God honored his belief in him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The substance, that means the ground or the confidence of. You have confidence or you're grounded on things hoped for. And then evidence of things not seen, you know. You can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it. For instance, God Himself. Anybody here ever seen God? No. Anybody here ever touched God? No. But everyone here, if I asked you, most of you, 99% of you would raise the hand if I said, do you believe in God? You would raise your hands. Something I don't see. Something I can't touch. But I know He exists. I know He's there. That's faith, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what God honors. And that's what He bless. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. I want a God to be pleased with me. God who can, who can create worlds, who can destroy worlds. Who's created sons and can destroy sons. One who's in charge of my eternal destination. I want him pleased with me. And the Bible tells me without faith, without believing, it's impossible to please him. No matter what I do for him, if it's not done out of faith and out of belief, he's not pleased. Remember when Saul says, we brought all these animals and things here to sacrifice to God? And Samuel looked at him and says, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. It's okay to sacrifice. It's okay to do. It's okay to work for God. It's okay to minister for Him. But what He really wants while you're doing that is obedience and faith. Believing in Him as you're doing so. Because it's impossible to please Him without it. It's right where Satan wants you to act out of unbelief. i got to hold my money to take care of myself and not believing in Him. i gotta, I got to do this to take care of myself and not believing and trusting in Him. I, I need this or that. Because i got to take care of me. That's my security. Without trusting and believing in Him. Or when God takes something out of your life, He can take a person, He can take a thing, He can take a job out of your life. And then we see whether you really trust and believe in Him. Some people here, have gone through that and proven to God their faith. I didn't say it was easy. didn't say there wasn't a struggle. But they've come through faithful to God. What a testimony that is. 
Others go through that. Some, a person's taken away from them, maybe through death, or, or they left, and their whole world crumbles. Because that was their security, not their belief and faith in God. What a great example of faithfulness when God takes something away or something out of our lives and we still believe in Him. Three men are told they're in trouble. They're told the king wants to talk to them. They were not surprised. They knew they'd be in trouble. And they went to speak to the king and the king says, Hey, didn't I say that if you heard a certain sound, a certain music, you were to bow down and worship, bow down and praise this idol, this image that I set up. Didn't I say that? Yes, you did. Well, I've heard that you won't do that. No, we will not. Because they knew that it says in the Old Testament, you're not to bow down and worship any graven image. Even though all the other Hebrews did. Even though everyone else did. They did not. Because they knew it was better to have faith and believe and obey. The king says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me, let me make it easy for you. This is how Satan is. Tell you what. I'm going to get rid of everybody. Just be me and you. Us four. When I'll play the music and you can bow down and worship. And the only person to know is me. Isn't that Satan? Nobody needs to know. It's okay. Act like you're being faithful to God. Pretend like you're trusting Him. But we know you're keeping this or you're taking care of yourself here. True Christian says, well, there'll be two people that'll know. Me and God. And he said, nobody needs to know. And they say the most important thing that we'll always have to say in our lives. They say, hey, God may deliver us from this fiery furnace. Or he may not. But our job, king, is to what? Trust in him. He may or he may not. We, we were listening to a, a song at work the other day. It's a Christian song. It was on a Christian statement station. And, and the, the gist of the words were, everything is going to be okay. And they say that a few times. And then finally I said, even if this kills me, Everything's going to be okay. That's belief. Even if we go through the fiery furnace and we die, we're going to trust in God. And what happened to those three Hebrew children? They were thrown into the fiery furnace and God honored their faith. He blessed their faith. And they didn't even smell like smoke when they got out. Matter of fact, Nebuchadnezzar looked in the fiery furnace, and I don't know what a fiery furnace is. I don't know how this all works. I wish I knew, but he's looking. Some say it's down into like a pit, whatever. But he said, didn't we throw in three? And they said, yeah. Why is there four? Ladies and gentlemen, if you ask God to go through the fiery furnace with you, he will. He will. That's what belief will get you. You won't be alone. He will not forsake you. If you want Him and you believe in Him. And that is that story of faith. Let me tell you this and then we'll go through these points. We'll be done here in a few minutes. Faith is not the absence of fear or doubt. I know you hear that. You can't have any doubt. You can't have any fear. And, and if you do, we were at a funeral one time and this guy was trying to raise this little boy from the dead. 
And, and he kept putting it, on, this is a true story, he kept putting his hand on there and praying to raise that boy from the dead. He knew there were some Baptist preachers in the back. And then in the end, he said, the reason why Jesus didn't raise that little boy from the dead right at that moment is because those Baptist preachers don't believe. Really? How many people do you think it takes for God to work? If he believed, it wouldn't have happened. If that's what God wanted. Okay? It has nothing to do with fear and doubt your faith. You don't think that Peter was scared when he saw the storms and everything, but he still got out of the boat. You don't think the three Hebrew children were afraid of the fiery furnace, but they still got in it. Faith, belief, is I'm still going to believe God even though I have some doubt. I'm still going to act in faith even though I'm afraid. The widow who gave her last might you don't think she was scared about what was going to happen when she got home? She wasn't concerned. She wasn't afraid. But yet she still obeyed. She still acted in faith. That's what God honors. When we act in our faith in spite of our fears, in spite of our doubts, instead of acting in unbelief. And that's the bottom line. Satan wants us to act on our unbelief. God wants us to act in belief. Faith is not the absence of fear or doubt. It is normal to have doubt. But remember, the devil will whisper to you, to you your doubts. He will suggest you act on your doubts. Faith is believing, trusting, and obeying God in spite of those doubts. The defeat comes from taking action in unbelief. The victory comes when we act in faith in spite of our doubts. Number one, we got three stories and then we'll be done. Number one is the story who had a boy who had a demon. He was demon possessed. And he kept throwing himself in the fire and foaming in the mouth and everything that comes with that. And the man brought his child to the disciples. He's probably taken him to doctors. He's probably taken him to everyone he can think of. Being a Jew, he probably took him to the temple. And he brought him to the disciples and the disciples couldn't do anything. And the man knew that no one could help. That's his knowledge. That's what he knew. You ever been to a doctor or been with somebody with a doctor and it says there's no more we can do? You know that no one can help. You know no one can help. There's nothing more we can do. This is it. I know no one can help, he says. Mark 9, 18, and whatsoever... He, whatsoever he taketh him, he teareth him, he foameth, he gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. I love this story too. And Jesus says to him, if you believe, this is possible. And the man looks at him and says to him, I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe you can. I trust in you. But I have doubts. I have fears. I don't know if you will. I don't know if you will do this or not. I have doubts. And Jesus, based on his belief, his faith, said, come out. And the demon was out of him. When he knew no one could help him. Ever been there? Ever had a situation where no one can help you? You know no one can help you? But your faith, your belief. Even people would say, give it up. It's over. But you have faith. You believe. And God will honor that belief. 
I know that no, I know that I've done all I can do. Simon and, and the disciples, Peter, were out fishing one night, and they're fishermen, they're professional fishermen, and they fished all night. And they got nothing. Nothing. And Jesus comes, he's never fished probably a day of his life. Jesus is a carpenter. He's not a professional fisherman. And Jesus says to him, throw it out one more time than that. Throw it out. And Peter says to him, I know that I've done all I can do. I know that. Let's read Luke 5, 5. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we've toiled all night and have taken nothing. We have done all that we can do. Ever been there? Ever been there? I've done everything humanly possible I can do. I, I've cut my bills down. I, 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 I've done this. I've done that. And still, we're financially short. I've done everything humanly possible. I've worked overtime. I'll work all the overtime they'll give me. i got a second job. And I'm still financially short done everything a human can do. Ever been there? But I still believe in God. I still have my faith in God. I still believe. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let the nets down. Beyond logic. Nevertheless, God, I'm going to believe in you. Here's my last might for my tithe. Here's my last dollar, my last cent. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to believe in you. God, at your word, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to trust you. And the Bible says they put the net down and there was so many fish in that net. The net was about to break. They had to call another boat over to put it in. What if... Peter had said, I know what I'm doing. I'm the fisherman. I'm not going to put my net down. It's just a waste of time. You ever been there? I've done all I can do. It's okay. Stay faithful. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Don't stop believing. It's right where Satan wants you to be when you start unbelieving. Number three, I know that nothing more can be done. You ever been there? There's nothing more anybody can do. Nothing more I can do. It, this is where it is. This is what it is. I know nothing more can be done. Nothing more can be done when somebody's dead, right? Here's Martha and Mary. They call for Jesus. Their brother is sick. Jesus takes three days to get there. And their, son, their, their brother dies. And once somebody's dead, that's it, right? Nothing more can be done. You ever had somebody tell you that? Besides a doctor? Hey, hey, this is just what it is. This is life. Nothing more can be done. It's over. Quit. I mean, that person, quit praying for them. They're a lost cause. It could be a child. It could be a friend. It could be a spouse. That's a lost cause. Nothing more can be done. When it comes to spiritual things, they're dead. They may even holler at you and yell at you. Stop telling me about Jesus. Stop witnessing to me. <clears throat> it could be that. And nothing more could be done. Don't stop believing. Here it is. Martha says to him in John eleven thirty nine. 39, Jesus said, take away the stone. He just said that we're going to be uh, Lazarus is going to be resurrected. She says... To him, I know in the last days he will be. He meant right now. And he says, take away the stone. What does Martha say? The sister, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, 
By this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Why, why take away the stone? It's already done. There's nothing more anybody can do. It's done. It's over with. It's done. But they moved away the stone. Because somebody didn't stop believing. And when they moved away the stone and had that act of faith, Jesus said, come forth. And Lazarus, what? Came back from the dead. It was done. It was over. But no, it was not. Because somebody didn't stop believing. Don't let the devil whisper in your ear what you already know. <clears throat> Don't let him let you act out on your fears and your doubts, your unbelief. Keep believing. That's your victory. <clears throat> your victory comes when you keep believing. One last verse. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed. <coughs> he writes and says, pay attention. Listen to me. Take heed, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. You'll be a Christian. You'll go to heaven. You'll be saved. But he says, some of us, will have an evil heart of unbelief. Listen to me. Not having faith, not believing, is evil. Is evil. We have a God who is, makes the impossible possible. And all He says for us is to what? Keep. Believing. Beyond what you know, beyond what you see, beyond what you feel, beyond what other people are telling you, beyond what's being whispered in your ear, beyond your doubts and your fears, keep believing. That's where your victory is. It's evil. To unbelieve. And when God says to do something, you obey Him. When He says, keep loving your enemies, you love them because you obey Him and you have faith. When He says to witness to others and to teach them about the gospel, in spite of all their anger, in spite of them telling you stop it, you still believe, you still have faith. God says, there's where your victory is, not your own belief. Not your own belief. Thank God there were some people in this church who said, you know what? We believe that God wants a church here. And we do. And we continue to have church here. And God has blessed us time and time again. Why? Because God, God honors his faith and belief. When others would probably have told you, others would have looked at it and said, close that sucker down. Close it down. Maybe even the devil whispered in some people's ears, this is worthless, this is useless, we're just banging our heads here. Close it down. <coughs> God says, why? Don't. Stop believing. In your own personal life, there's going to be tragedies, there's going to be heartache, there's going to be pain, <coughs> there's going to be troubles, there's going to be trials. And God says just one simple thing. Keep believing in me. Trust me. I love you, child. I love you. And I'm not going to let you go down. I'm not going to let you sink. Remember Peter when he did? And then finally, hollers, Christ, if God help me, Jesus help me, and his hand came down and reached and picked him right back up. 
in spite of your doubts, in spite of your fears, in spite of what you know, your own understanding. Lean on Him. Trust in Him. Stay faithful to your God. Believe in Him. There's your victory. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. <coughs> we'll have a time of invitation here real soon. Father, I thank you so much.